Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we're gonna be looking at how to uh, force uh, an unlock, okay? And so what we're gonna do is, as always, we're going to need a new folder here. So I'm just going to expand this, and I'm going to uh, reveal in my file exp uh, explorer here. And we're going to make a new folder here. We're gonna call it uh, 132. Uh, locking, right? <laughs> okay, like force unlocking, I suppose. And I'm gonna to try to do this with Terraform Cloud because I feel like that will be the easiest way for us to do this. So I'm gonna just go main.tf. And what I'm gonna do is make my way over to Terraform Cloud. I know we still have that uh, other environment that we're using. The uh, VCS Terraform one. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new workspace. I'm just gonna call this one CLI driven. We'll say create workspace. And this one, whoops, we're going to say uh, force unlocking. And then that's gonna give us that nice little code there that we can grab. We'll paste that on in there. And um, I'm gonna go back to our last tutorial here where we had project two and because I need something that's gonna take a little bit of time so that we can force an unlock, right? So I'll go ahead and grab that code. We'll paste that on in there. And we actually are going to use the version if we can here, because I would rather do that. Um, and this is gonna be Terraform. Hit up Apache example. I think I have to do exam pro code to get that module there. And it's gonna be version 1.1.0. And we are not gonna import our VPC ID here. We're just gonna set it like we did before. So we'll just say var VPC ID. And we will need a variables here. So we'll say And we'll have to go over to our um, project here. We'll copy that over. And what I want is to add the VPC ID here. Okay. And I really don't feel like entering all the state form files. I guess I'm gonna to have to. There's not really any way around that, I suppose. I'm gonna CD back here. 132, Terraform init. Um, cannot apply constraint to a non-registered URL. So I clearly uh, entered that incorrectly. We'll go up to here and see what it was. This one's referencing it locally. Uh, we used it in another project here. Maybe we used it in the remote state one here. Nope. Uh, standard probably. There it is. Okay, so we'll go ahead and grab that. We're gonna go down to our main here. We're gonna paste that on in. And I'm gonna do Terraform init. It's going to initialize that back in there for us. And uh, while that's going, I'm gonna go set up our variables because this always takes a thousand years. So we need to add quite a few here. So I'm just gonna pull this over here and then pull this over there. I'm gonna go look at a previous one here where we have TFRs. Um, so we want a VPC ID here. Okay. We want our my, our my Cider block here. We're gonna get our public key here. We are gonna add another instance type. We are gonna add a server name. And uh, we're gonna need our environment variables, never can remember these. So we're gonna go over to the Terraform registry. 
have this open already up here. So I'm gonna go to the top, Terraform Registry. We'll go over to Providers, just make this a little bit smaller here. Whoops, a little bit too small. And we will go to Documentation, scroll on down, grab these keys here. This is gonna go first, that's gonna be sensitive. We're gonna cap as always. And we're gonna grab the first one here. Paste that in. We go grab the second one here. Forgot the name here, so we'll grab that one here. We'll say uh, whatever the region is here. I should really memorize these so I don't have to ever have to look up that page again. Um, that one's not sensitive. We probably want the secret sensitive. That's probably more important than the key. Okay, and so we're all configured here to go. And so what I want to do is deploy this, but before I do, I just want to double check to make sure that I know how to use the force unlock. So I'm just going to go here and we're going to just pull up some documentation. So we're going to say Terraform force unlock. And so we just write Terraform Force Unlock, Lock ID. We need the actual key there. Um, so we can disable it with the hyphen lock command here. So that's what I need to find out. So. All right, I'll be back in a second, okay? All right, so what's gonna happen is um, when we run it, it's going to give us that output of a lock ID when we do Terraform apply twice. So what I'm gonna do is do Terraform apply auto approve to get this going. I'm hoping this just works. You gotta spell that right with two Ps. And we're just waiting for that plan to start. And while that's going, I'm just going to open up a, another one here. I'm going to make my way into the same directory, CD13, or it's 132. Whoops. We've got to be quick here. Uh, that's old, so I'm going to close that out. That's old. We'll go back to this one. I want to get it before it finishes. So what I'll do is type in um, Terraform apply. And what it's gonna say is that it's locked. If we can do this quick enough. Oh, interesting. So it says waiting for one runs to finish before queued. So I guess this is a case where if we're using Terraform Cloud, we're not gonna be able to get that lock ID. And I guess the only way to unlock it would be to go into uh, Terraform Cloud itself as it's executing, right? And see how it's running. And from there, you could do a force unlock. But that's not what we were trying to do. We were trying to use the actual command so I could show you. So that means that we do have to um, use a Terraform backend. And so if that's the case, what I'm going to do is once this is done here, so now it's triggering the other one. It's going to stop that. So we're gonna go back to our original one here and I'm just gonna tear this down, uh, destroy. And I'm gonna go back over here. And what I wanna do is go back to our uh, standard backend tutorial because that'll make it a lot easier for us to do in that one. And so we will just go and close off these here. Close out our tabs. And what I wanna do here is go to our main one here. And we need to upgrade that to 1.10. And the other problem is that we're gonna to have to actually set this up for a DynamoDB table. So not only are we gonna to have to create this folder, right? So what I want you to do is go to your S3 and we wanna make sure that we already have this uh, bucket. And we do, good. So we'll go over to DynamoDB and create ourselves a new thing here. So say create table, 
and as always they're updating the UI and I just want to call this like uh, force unlock Terraform. I don't know what we'd have to set as the partition key. That's a good question. So state locking DynamoDB Terraform. Okay. So which can be enabled by setting the DynamoDB table field existing. A single DynamoDB table can be used to uh, lock multiple remote state files. So it's not saying here like what we'd have to set up as the key for this. Okay, so maybe we can just set it. I don't think it's gonna auto create it, but let's give it a go and see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna go down to DynamoDB options. Here it is. Custom endpoint to the AWS DynamoDB API. This can be sourced from the endpoint. And then there's the table name used for state locking. The table must have a primary key of lock ID with a type string. Okay, so that's our instructions there. And we're gonna go back to DynamoDB. We're gonna set up our partition key and that's gonna be a string. We don't need to set a sort key here. Um, default settings are fine. And that's going to go ahead and create there. And so what I'm going to do is grab that name. And what we need is DynamoDB table. Okay, so I'm going to do Terraform init. And we're going to migrate the state. I'm totally fine with that. Yes. Great. And so now if I do Terraform apply, Oh, right. We have that old code in there that we're not using. All right, so uh, yeah, we have some old code here we need to remove. So we're gonna just take out this workspaces thing um, to see if there's anything else remaining there. No, I think that's it. So we'll go ahead and we'll try this again. And uh, we are going to make sure, we're gonna to have to switch to both of them in order for this to work. So I'm just gonna go here ahead of time. Okay, we'll go back over to here. No problems this time around. So we'll say yes. And that is provisioning. So I'm gonna go back to this one here and I'm just going to type in Terraform apply. And it should complain saying, hey, this is locked right now. You shouldn't unlock it. And so this is where you would grab that ID, okay? And so you would just type in Terraform force unlock and then we'd paste the value in here. And the thing is, this is where you just type yes, but we definitely don't want to do this because the other one is provisioning, but I just wanted to show you how you get that ID and pass it along. Um, and, you know, when I'm talking about state locking in the lecture content, I kind of wrote about here, it says state locking happens automatically on all operations that could write state. You won't see any message that it is happening if state locking fails. So it's true as locking is happening, it, it doesn't tell you that it's going on, but it will tell you when you do another Terraform apply, it will say, hey, it's in it's in state. So I didn't technically lie here, but I guess that could be like a little highlight that would have been good in the lecture content there. Um, but I'm just going to cancel it out there. We're gonna go back to our first one here and we can see that that was deployed. And what we can do for fun, I don't think there'll be anything within DynamoDB because I think that it will create the record and then get rid of it but we just click into our table here and we go view items. Notice that there's zero items right now. Well, no, there it is, okay. 
So there was a an idea at one point. So I think that is good. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and destroy the infrastructure. Type yes. And while that is happening, um, well, we got to wait for this to finish. But once that is done, then we'll go ahead and we'll just tear down the DynamoDB and um, S3 bucket, okay? All right, so that is done destroying there. So what I want to do here is go ahead and uh, just delete this table. Really don't like this new UI. I don't know who came up with this. Um, Yep, we'll delete all that. Make our way over to S3 here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this table. Um, we'll have to go in and just delete all the records first. Pretty sure we turned off versioning there, so there's no versioning right now. And Oh, I went into the wrong bucket. Not that it matters, that's old anyway. Oh, cool, yeah, so we didn't look at this earlier, but uh, when we had production and staging, they placed them into these uh, areas here. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Um, I guess it's something I didn't look at, but if we go Terraform workspace list, are we in the default one? I would have thought we were in there, eh? Oh, we're in the production one. Okay, so, I mean, I never showed this to you earlier because we didn't actually deploy it, but um, we actually did do a deploy this time around. And I guess both the environments were set up here and they had their own folders. So that's kind of interesting to see. We'll go ahead and we'll just go delete all this. And I'm just going to leave the bucket around here just in case I want to use it again, but it is completely emptied out, so we're good from scratch. So there you go.